since this is a preview of my um, Astro Academy course, you are going to receive a workbook and uh, lecture notes from this video. The links are down below. So make sure to go and get the workbook right now so that you can use the workbook while you're watching the video and uh, analyzing your own chart because this topic the topic of finances, career, work, how you can make money, how you can be abundant and what you should do is huge. It's a separate module that I'm going to create. It's separate module. It's, it's big. And in this video, I will try to focus only on how you can make money and where you can get the money from. And by the way, if I look different, if everything is different, it's because I lost my phone and I'm using my friend's iPhone. So if the quality is good compared to my previous videos, then maybe I should focus on buying iPhone. <sighs> Let's begin. Um, I hope you already got the workbook and the lecture notes. You can read the lecture notes after you watch this video and after you do the workbook with the video and then you will need to read the lecture like the notes from this whole lecture with details to kind of make your own analysis of your own chart oh by the way this video is for people who already have some basic knowledge of astrology but if you don't know astrology much i would just give you like a little short um tutorial on what you will need you will need your chart. So for your chart, you need your time of birth. Very important. That time of birth, the day, the year, the place. And when you go to any website where you can get your natal chart, you need it to be like a chart chart. Okay. It should be a chart. Be sure that you choose not whole sign, not whole sign system. You choose Placidus. Placidus. Because that's what I work with and that's what I rely on and that's what I believe in. So when we think about money in astrology, there are two houses that you can look at. Second house and eighth house. But since this video is about how you can make money and where you can make your money from, in what way, in what behavior, what things you need to have to make your own money, we will focus on the second house because... Eighth house is about other people's money. It's about investments. It's about scholarships. It's about grants. It's about uh, inheritance and etc. Like where you can get money, but without putting lots of work or without even thinking about it. And for some people who have aspects of gambling, <laughs> I mean, that's according to what I, I noticed. If you have aspects of gambling, like fifth house activation that is connected to your eighth house, you can think about investments like doing uh, stocks, doing crypto and etc. But more about that later. So we need your second house cusp. Most of the astrologers would say just think about the cusp. I say focus on all the signs that are in your second house. Okay, so we need your second house, what signs are in your second house and what sign it starts from. Then you need to look at Jupiter. So the stronger Jupiter you have in your chart, the more money you can have. Um, Taurus, you need to check where is the Taurus in your chart and how occupied and how strong is Taurus in your chart. And Scorpio as well. Um, so second house is responsible for everything that is yours, your value, how you make money, but mostly what is your relationship with money. So when the money comes to you, what happens next? Like, do you keep it? Do you save it? Do you spend it? Do you, it just, or, or, or it comes and you don't even know that it came. So this are very important aspects, okay? And in the workbook, you will be like starting writing down. So for example, what is the sign that your second house starts from and what signs are in your house? You just need to write it down, okay? Check, check, check. Then we will need to look at the planet, the ruler or co-ruler of your second house and where are they or it is located. That's important to know what fields you will have to work in or what fields 
will bring you money. Also, in this video, we will discuss the, the personality you have towards money. Then we're going to talk about what aspects to your second house or to your second house rulers can be positive or can be like kind of like there could be tension. So where and how the money can come to you and in what cases the money can go from you and how you can kind of fix that. I will bring my own example because it's way easier, you know, to explain. But just to clarify, this is not going to be explanation of every single sign, every single planet, because for that I prepared um, a workbook and a lecture note. And in general, during the course, we will go over every single thing that I just mentioned. But this is just an overview so that I don't overwhelm you. And if you want to study astrology with me and in detail, the links are down below. So first, we're going to talk about the nature of you making money, of you treating money. So there are like two aspects that we can think about. First of all, if your second house is in a cusp of earth signs, or water signs. If you have, let's say, your second house starts with Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio, these signs are the ones that like to save money. But the the reason and the way that these two different um, elements save money is different. So, for example, people who have um, Earth signs uh, in their cusp in their second house are more prone to kind of save money just because they like to have money, just because they love checking or counting money. And then we have water signs who also are able to save money, but the way that they do it is out of fear or out of like. Um, stability they want stability they want to have money just in case something happens or like there is a fear fear-based saving with earth signs it's more about like mm, i like to have money it gives me pleasure like i love money that's earth signs and then we have fire and air signs so these are elements yeah a fire and air elements these two elements are more prone to like spend with money without thinking for some of them, it's just like the money just comes and goes without even knowing. So it's like, uh, I call it active money. The money comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. So that's one aspect we can think about based just on your element, earth or water or air or um, fire. So at the same time, you can combine those that information, right? Then we have mutable signs, fixed signs and cardinal signs. So... If you have a mutable uh, sign in your second house that talks about um, you being able to kind of multitask and work on different fields and on different projects because you just can't. It's not that you get bored, but you just, uh, you're, it's like, I call it ADHD, but like, it's more like um you do one thing but at the same time your brain thinks about something else so for example um mutable signs are like uh, gemini virgo pisces and sagittarius my second house starts with virgo and i i work in many different fields and i make money from all those different fields um but it's not because i get bored of one of them it's just because when I start working, I get excited about other things. So I can do many, many, many different different things. That's mutable signs. Then uh, when we have fixed signs, these signs prefer to be stable. So these are <laughs> the signs that will do the same job for 20 years and it's totally fine. They uh, find comfort and stability in that. So for example, for someone like me, that would be death. But for someone like with a second house cusp of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, these people are fine. They prefer to stay um, in the same job for many years. Not in the same job, but like in the same field. Stability is important. Like my mom worked in the same company, in the same field for 20 years. And she's fine with that. She's It's totally okay. And she has she had money okay and then we have cardinal signs so <laughs> these are the signs that get bored and i am a cardinal sign so inside of me when it comes to just in general like cardinal signs they just get bored fast they start lots of new things and they just need to move on uh the the personality of cardinal signs mm -hmm. in general 
are like that but when it comes to money it's the same so if your second house starts with aries cancer Capricorn, and libra these people with this second house these signs are more prone to like come up with new ideas start new things delegate to somebody else and and start something new completely new or it could be even oh yeah it could be the same field but new projects all the time so with mutable is like different stuff for example astrology i'm doing astrology i'm doing uh beauty i'm doing teaching english teaching math it's like completely different fields but i'm doing but with uh Cardinal signs, it's, let's say, the same field, but uh, different stuff. For example, if if I'm doing astrology, it's going to be like YouTube. It's going to be consultations. It's going to be teaching. And yeah, so you can combine all of this information and, and connect all the dots. Because as I just explained, I am myself a cardinal sign. And then my second house has um, mutable sign and cardinal sign. So it, it lo there's lots of things, okay? That's why... Make sure you have the, the workbook and you're writing down everything that I'm saying and then you will do your own analysis. The things about like having your own business or doing a freelance is also a topic in this field, but it's it, it's kind of like a separate topic. And there are more information about that when we go into depth. But for now, I can just bring an example. If you want to have your own business or do freelance, you need to know that there are some aspects that you could check if you have for doing your own business or doing freelance. So freelancing and having your own business are completely, completely different things. Freelance is when you can do everything by yourself and you do not need someone telling you what to do. And you are a solo person doing stuff, working from home, working from somewhere else and etc. And then you have uh, an entrepreneur or someone who wants to open their business the the difference between these two is that with an entrepreneur and a business person they need to have a strong aspect of um, delegating the job to somebody else being a leader and having strong sixth house but in both of, both of these cases both have strong sixth house which talks about your routine how hard you work how consistent you are that's for freelancer a freelancer will need a strong sixth house for that but for a a businessman or an entrepreneur sixth house will talk about how you work with your employees how you delegate and what kind of employees you have so there there's like a big difference and strong um signs and um aspects and planets or yeah the ones that you will have for freelance and owning a business is something in leo and capricorn but about that we will talk later some if if you want to talk about having your own business and your own something comment down below maybe i'll make a separate video but we're just talking about money today so for example, my second house starts with Virgo, but at the same time, it has Libra. So the qualities that I have from Virgo, which is about saving money, as I said, like Earth signs, they prefer to save money. Um, it's not that they want to just like save, save. They just want to have money. Like I like keeping money in different locations and I forget about them. <laughs> But when I find them, the excitement I get, totally worth it. Even even if I will be broke for some time and think that I don't have money, but somehow I find money somewhere and it brings me so much joy. So that's the Virgo thingy um, that I have, which is the earth sign. Yeah, earth element, earth sign. Also with earth signs, especially with Virgo, there is this mind of like, why would I spend money on something new? where I can buy something maybe used, but it's cheaper and has the same quality and it's like better. Because with earth element in your second house, the analytics, the brain starts like weighing stuff. Like, why should I do this if I can do this? Because there are, for example, let's say fire signs or um, air signs that could just like spend money just because they liked it immediately. And, or maybe they want to buy something that has a name like Louis Vuitton or iPhone, just because for the status of something. With earth signs, it's more about like, why? Why should I do it if I can do it 
this way. So when we talk about the signs that are in your second house, again, we're talking about the qualities uh, of you, your relationship with that money. How are you treating money? But at the same time, at the same time, I have Libra in my second house as well. So with Libra comes everything fancy. Like even though uh, with Virgo in the second house, I kind of, I don't calculate, but it's some, some things don't make sense to me. Why should I buy this? Let's say I lost my phone and everyone is telling me buy the newest iPhone because it has good camera. My brain is like, I mean, I can buy a used phone with a good camera for cheaper from somebody like that's the brain that i have but at the same time when it comes to libra that i have in there in my second house it's also about like hmm is it going to be like um is it going to record the videos very nicely for my youtube is it going to be pleasant like the voice the microphone of that phone is it going to be good and like I want to buy Samsung, but I want to buy like fancy Samsung. I want to, I want the color of my phone to be this. Even though at one side I'm thinking about the money, like why would I spend that much money? But at the same time, I'm like, no, 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 this phone shouldn't be blue because my last one was blue. I don't want blue phone. I want black. I want like fancy. Okay. So you should also analyze. You shouldn't focus just on one sign. I know maybe some astrologers be like, what the hell is she talking about? But, but. That's what I observed. That's why I use uh, Placidus system and I use both of the signs in one house. Now we take the ruler of this house. We look for it. Where is it? The location of the planet is going to tell us the field and what type of money you can have. So depending on the ruler's location, you can just estimate and analyze what fields you will be working in and making money from. It's not about your career where you will be making, where you will be having a status. It's more about which fields will, br will bring you money or how these plans are going to bring money to you. So if you look in my chart, my second house is Virgo. So it's ruled by Mercury, Mercury and Libra, Venus. So my mercury is in the fifth house and there are so many ways you can interpret the fifth house and i can tell you all of the ways i did money from my fifth house mercury being in the fifth house will tell you tell me where i can make money fast by myself just do it because we're talking about second house so with mercury in the fifth house first of all fifth house is kids and Mercury is also about education and teaching and learning. So my first salary, I think my first incomes were from uh, working in kindergarten and teaching kids English and math. It's just the money that comes. It's like, it's not like I'm going to work as a teacher for forever. That's how I made money. Then my co-ruling planet is Venus because my second sign in the second house is Libra and it's ruled by Venus. And Venus for me is in the sixth house. And sixth house is all about providing services. It's all about, uh, because it's Venus, it's also beauty. So my planet is Venus and Venus is about beauty. And guess what I'm studying? Cosmetic science. I, I study that. I make with my own hands because Virgo in the second house uh, is also making things with your own hand and selling because sixth house can also talk about sales but because it's Mercury, Mercury is also rule, it rules uh, Gemini and Gemini is about sales. So making something with my hands and sell it. And with Venus in a Sixth house is for women, is for beauty, providing services. But how do I make that money? How do I make that money? Mercury in the fifth house. It's literally being on camera, being a Leo, showing off yourself. But since it's Venus, I have to be beautiful. I have to be pretty. I can, whenever I make, um, I just don't feel comfortable making a YouTube video or sh or showing up to places where I need to sell something or present something looking like a student, which most of the time I, I look like homeless person. But when it comes to making money and work, 
I have to look good and that's how I make money. The moment I look good on camera, the moment I'm wearing jewelry and stuff or I have red lipstick on, things go well. So as you can see, these tiny details are very important to analyze yourself or somebody else. So <laughs> I remember one astrologer was teaching like, if you want a man to kind of like spend money for you or like really take you out on dinners and like just give you money just for nothing, you should be checking their second house because that's where you see the person's relationship with money. Okay, even though um, I am Leo rising, I am very generous. But at the same time, when it comes to spending money for myself, I get a little bit like greedy. So Virgo in a second house, sometimes considered greedy, but it's not greedy for others. It's greedy for some things that like, why should I do that if I can do something else? Okay, now let's talk about aspects that are going to kind of like take your money away. And then what aspects are going to give you lots of money and you can work on those um like tensions those negative aspects kind of bad aspects you can work on those <laughs> some aspects that are kind of they bring tension when it comes to your finances please check them out so your second house and the second house ruler ruler's relationship with mars if there is any tension with mars to your second house or to your second house ruler like mars conjuncting your second house your second house ruler um squaring it or opposing it this means that with these aspects the person you or the person who you are checking uh, is super impulsive when it comes to money they spend money kind of uh, without even thinking and then after they've done the job they might regret so for these if you have this kind of aspect you should really uh <laughs> i have that <laughs> it just, i have it so sometimes with these aspects you have to like let's say you have an urge to buy something like i do that all the time you have an urge to buy something take a break breathe in and be like do okay don't don't think about do i really need it just take a break just like you go and you see something on the shelf and you're like oh, i want it now okay take a break check the whole place like the whole supermarket and then if you come back to it and and your urge is still strong okay get it and then you will regret it but if you forget about it it means you don't need it because you were acting on your impulses and i have it <laughs> yeah there are so many things i buy and then i'm like why did i do that but when it comes to mercury retrogrades i'm like oh, do not buy anything but if you have an aspect with Mars, square, a uh, position or a conjunction. Okay, another aspect is if your second house is in Pisces, there is Pisces in your second house, Neptune, or there are um, second house ruler aspect with Neptune square conjunction uh, or opposition when it comes to pisces and neptune in the second house this usually talks about um people like stealing from you or you spending your money without knowing where is it going so it's naturally like your mo money just goes and you don't know about it like the best example is you lose money a lot let's say you do investments you do crypto or like stuff like that and you lose money or you're literally walking and someone steals your wallet or your car so this is also something you have to work on also um if you have aspects with mars it can also talk about man in your life could be taking money away from you or you will be spending money on on man on guys or your boyfriends and that's where your money could could go away yeah okay and now let's talk about like good aspects that i don't have <laughs> and i want to be a billionaire yep uh, but you never know you never know one venus venus is the planet of okay love but money is a planet of money so if you have very nice uh, venus especially venus having really nice aspects with your second house um or your second house ruler rulers bellissimo so nice aspects are venus conjunction 
with your second house ruler, uh, sextile and trine. This is beautiful. And another aspect is Jupiter. Oh my god, Jupiter. Jupiter is literally the best planet in the world. I would like, I, I want to have a tattoo of Jupiter, but I'm never going to have a tattoo, even though I, even though I have to try. Uh, so Jupiter aspects, same thing. Uh, conjunction, uh, sextile or trine with your second house ruler or in your second house, it definitely brings an abundance, luck. And if you have aspects with Jupiter to your second house, one thing you have to know for sure is that you need to study a lot. You need to expand your knowledge. You need to learn new languages. You need to work with foreigners. You need to travel. You need to meet people from other places, from other countries and from different regions that you don't know about. The more you work on that, the more abundant, the more money you will receive if you have those aspects with your second house. Uh, at the same time, if you have aspects with, with Venus, you the more um, you can enhance it by um, being more diplomatic, by knowing how to negotiate, by knowing how to interact with people, by um, wearing nice clothes, looking good, being fancy, and maybe the money that you will receive um, is going to be connected to females. If you are a man, maybe you will be receiving money from females if you are working like let's say in, in beauty industry, so you are like supplying skincare to women and etc. Um, then if you have um, Mars in your second house, it means that just Mars by itself. If you have it in your second house, it will, um, usually talks about the, the speed that you have, the, the desire that you have to make money. It's, it's strong. And if you have Pluto in your second house, it is also an indicator of big money in your life. But it really depends on how you work with it as well. And uh, I said that I won't mention the, the eighth house because it's not as Im is important. But when it comes to someone who really wants to make money from investments, if your second house ruler is in the eighth house, let's say, um, or your second house has connections with your eighth house or your second house ruler has aspects with a planet in the eighth house or with the eighth house ruler. Um, in this case, you are going to be, um, you are going to make money from the fields of investment, from stocks, from grants, from loans, and like working with other people's money. That's where you can make money from. So for example, me, if you are similar, I hope you took some notes because I'll explain how mine works. So my eighth house, uh, starts with Pisces and it has Aries. My the Pisces is ruled by Neptune and I have Neptune literally sitting here with um, very close by to my second house ruler which is Mercury um, and my second co-ruler of eighth house is Aries and Aries is ruled by Mars and my Mars is conjunct Mercury my second house ruler and I also have Saturn in my eighth house. So let me just bring, like, explain how this, all of this work. All of these plans that I mentioned, except for Saturn, are in the fifth house of gambling. So potentially, I can make money from gambling. So if I was living in the US and I traveled to Los Angeles for a casino, I think I would make money. But at the same time, it's a little bit like risky. But if you work um, with planets and you have strong planet, like let's say I am a Capricorn, so I have strong Capricorn skills and abilities, which is Saturn. And Saturn is in the eighth house, which usually talks about not having money because it's a restriction. But because, tfu -tfu, I need some wood. But because I work with uh, Capricorn energy, I have good Saturn in the money field and I have um a trine or a sextile i have a sextile with my mercury my mars so the the what is it the ruler of the second house and the ruler of eighth house are having an aspect with eighth house which means when it comes to stocks investments scholarships grants other people's money i have a potential but i have to put an effort it's not going to be like hey 
here is an inheritance that will never happen but if i put work into applying for things filling up the documents that's where i get the money from there is a possibility so yeah i usually say saturn is the planet that restricts and there are limitations but if you work on saturn if you put an effort you get the money so i hope you checked and worked on your chart with the workbook that was provided and i really hope this video was interesting because it's just an overview of the whole module of money and we just discussed one aspect and there's so so many 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 other things that i would love to share but i know uh youtube won't uh, promote it to more people to see because most of the people come to my youtube channel to check uh astrology forecast but i really hope that this video was helpful and um you got the workbooks and yeah if you're interested in studying astrology with me the link is also down below and um um, if you like the julipuses i mean look look so good if you have like leo rising or you have lots of capricorn in you you would love this and tauruses please go get yourself some gold we need some gold we're moving into recession we need to have gold <laughs> that's my eighth house talking okay okay um if you like this video and you're new to this channel hello hi Nice to meet you. Please subscribe to this channel and share with other people. Oh, please let me know in comments down below how was this video. I think this is the shortest video I've ever done. And I think I'm going to also like edit it and put some stuff. So wish me luck and happy money making. I'll see you in my next video. Ciao, ciao. Au revoir. Bye-bye.